Greetings for the mechanics enthusiasts and welcome to my channel. I'm Engineer Liu and today we're going to talk about uh, some aspects of the Bernoulli equation. Well, first of all, thank you for over 700 subscri subscribers. Thank you very much for helping growing this channel, for viewing my videos. Let's continue with that. Our goal is to reach 1,000 subs, okay? Well, uh, in, my, in some of my previous videos, I talk a little of how I talk a little about of on how airplanes fly, and uh, in many explanations, uh, people. Um, they usually use uh, the Bernoulli principle to, or the Bernoulli equation to explain flight. But we have to be careful in doing that because that's not very accurate. And depending on the case, you can be, this could lead to mistakes and some uh, meaningful errors. Okay, so if you remember, from your classes on fluid mechanics. Uh, well, uh, the Bernoulli equation some cases it's called Bernoulli summation. It's given by if we neglect the forces due to gravity it looks something like this here we have velocity and uh, the gravity acceleration and here we have pressure divided by the specific weight of the fluid equals here velocity here it's 1, 1, and on the right hand side is going to be 2. And we can multiply all this by the gravity acceleration, get rid of it. So then we arrive at this 2 plus 1 time divided by the pressure divided by the density equals v2 squared divided by 2 plus the pressure okay so this is the equation which is most familiar to you okay which is the Bernoulli equation in, re regarding only the velocity and pressure which are the fundamentals the main variables in the case of a frictionless flow that is one of the main assumptions of this equation. Of course, you have the assumption of incompressive flow, so you don't have uh, compressibility. So regarding flight, it's only applicable. It's only applicable to subsonic uh, flight. It does it, this equation on this form can be can't be applied to transonic flow, uh, supersonic and hypersonic flow. So if your Mach number, which is the ratio of the flow velocity by the speed of sound, if your Mach number is close to one, if you're very close to uh, the speed of sound, uh, compressibility becomes uh, start to become a significant aspect of your flow so you can describe and explain flight using Bernoulli equation anymore okay so this is only applicable applicable to incompressive flow uh, a steady flow but uh, you can uh, derive a uh, Bernoulli equation for unsteady flow so which which we have uh, uh, the change of the streamlines. That's that's it's it's possible. Um, 
and that of course it's applied, applicable only to frictionless flow, the flow without viscosity. When deriving this equation from the Navier-Stokes equation, uh, I disregarded uh, the term due to viscosity forces, the shear stress due to viscosity were not considered. So in some t in some cases, uh, friction due to viscosity can play a significant role in uh, for uh, a wing to uh, govern to govern the mechanism behind the lift or and the drag of the wing. The drag on a wing is primarily due to a viscosity forces, viscosity stresses, and of course we have to apply this equation on the same streamline. Say, uh, let's see, here we have a wing. Okay, so air is flowing here. We have something like this, right? Here are the streamlines. Oh, that's looks That looks terrible. Here, and let's say here we have another streamline. So, in order to apply this equation, we must apply between two points which are on the same streamline. So let's say we have this streamline here, S1, and here we have our point 1 and our point 2, okay? So we can apply the Bernoulli equation for these two points here because they are on the same streamline. So uh, in uh, to summarize what was said here, uh, for for the Bernoulli equation to be applied, we have to be dealing with incompressive, uh, a steady, but it can be on steady flow, but not on this form here. Incompressive, uh, a steady, and a frictionless flow, uh, an ideal fluid flow with uh, no regards to uh, viscosity so, or it can be said also a real irrotational flow where we don't have any vortices vortexes on the flow so if you want to explain flight as using this equation here you will come to a problem because it's only it's it's more than a half uh, actually but it's a halfway to explain this phenomenon. Of course, you will have a significant uh, lift generated by the pressure force on a wing, but there's another part of the lift generation on a wing which uh, comes from the friction. Okay, so friction, the, vort the, the vorticity generated by friction uh, flow with uh, a viscous flow on an airfoil can generate lift depending on the case but generally in most cases okay this is you have to keep in mind that this is uh, it can be a very uh, a bad general general generalization here uh, in most cases the pressure the force due to pressure governs the physics here so in most cases it's the pressure that generates lift on a wing so you can apply this equation but keep in mind that's uh, a very you can fall in the uh, area of uh, you can fall in an oversimplification here and if you are designing or dealing with flight uh, the viscous the friction uh, Term, the friction force due to viscosity can play a significant role and by only considering the pressure you can arrive at a very inaccurate results okay so that's it for today again thank you for 700 subs don't forget to like to subscribe to this channel to share this video with others to activate your notifications okay see you next time bye